Okay, so, uh, what's the what's the group's plan from here? Are you finishing up at the Thinking Man's Tavern? You you happy? You got anything else you want to ask anyone? We were going to talk to the band player. Ah, yes, of course, Jira, the terrible harmonica player. That's what. All right. Actually, that. So it's just that guy not liking music at all. No, it's the same guy. No, I mean, he, oh, is, is he good? Um, is he actually bad, or is it that guy? Just he's like he's all right. Like they're playing a cover of uh, a song by local celebrity Rock Ruckus called "Too Poor to Be Lazy," and uh, he's doing a decent job of it. I love those guys. Rock Ruckus oh. is a champion cuck. That's right. Rock Ruckus, <laughs> the black guy who's the only cuck in the entire. No, game. he's not. He's not the cuck. He cucks a god. I'm, <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. That's right. I'm sorry. Yes, I forgot. He cucks <laughs> another dude's. Or yeah, yeah. But I, of course, being the only black the man. Back, yep. Yep. Yeah, you know this. Fantastic. I do know this. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, it's not him that you're talking to. Obviously, <laughs> they're just doing a cover of one of his songs. Um, and uh, as you approach, they're they're just finishing up, and uh, this guy on the harmonica stops, looks over, and says, "Hey, what's up?" You guys want to talk? You look like you want to talk. What's that accent? What are you talking about? It's I don't want to talk now. You don't want to talk? Okay. And he starts playing the harmonica again. Scott, we would like to ask you about the Namasa He stops, huffs, and says, I thought you said you don't want to talk. That was out of character about the voice. <laughs> Answer, uh, would, yes, would you please answer a few questions that we have about this lady? Yeah, okay. And uh, he, he stops playing harmonica, chucks it at one of the other band members who just sort of looks at him and, uh, in, in like pigeon elvis, throws an insult his way, uh, which gets a bit of a laugh from the others. And he steps down from the, the, the little step that serves as a stage. He says, uh, what you want to talk about? Know much? You spend much time with Nalasarhu? Yeah. Describe. Good girl, that good bird. She's right. What about her? She hasn't been around in a bit. No, she's uh, she's dead. Oh, it's unfortunate. Sad to hear. Uh, you, you so you spent much time with her. What did you? Use? What did you just do together? Oh. She is a, uh, what do you call it? Groupie? Yeah, groupie. I do an insight check. See, is he holding stuff back? Yeah, roll me an insight check. Did it roll? Oh, yeah, it did. Sorry, my thing wasn't scrolled down. <laughs> uh, he very obviously doesn't seem at all surprised or upset at the news of her death. Um, doesn't appear to be holding much back, but he's not offering anything, so it's, you know, it's kind of hard to say. He just seems indifferent. Oh, well. Uh... Anyone got any ideas to pitch in? Um, you seem awful mellow for after hearing about a co uh, acquaintance's death. You shrug. You, you what do you want me? You want me to break down and cry right here? Yeah, can, I can do that. Just okay. And uh, he he puts on a show of <laughs> sarcastic. Really want to punch this guy. Go for it. No, Dimitri's got too much self control for that. Um, I get uh, Oh, God. 
disappointed bunch of fuck. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you say to him? Uh, he, he was making a suggestion. Um, oh, wait, I wasn't there for when you guys were talking about the harmonica player's shady contacts, right? So I, I wouldn't know. Oh, wait, no. Well, wait, you filled each other in. Yeah, yeah. we'll we'll fold, fold each other in, so. How about the straightforward approach? So you're going to interrupt his, uh, his foe crying? Yeah. All right, what do you say? Uh, enough of this stupid farce. Who's your contacts? He stopped. What contacts are you talking about? Uh, I'm not getting an intimidation. Chavro, are you? Hey, if you're gonna try and intimidate him, make the roll, bro. Oh. Alright, fine, whatever. I'm actually not. I don't think any of you are particularly I mean, I'm good. I'm better at a lot of other things, but... You can take my hero point if you need it. Yeah, you've still got all those. Oh wait, do we get hero points back? Yeah! Whoops. Alright. Never mind, don't need it. Happy with that? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that. Alright, what are you saying with your intimidation? Uh, listen. I'm not afraid to, uh... Not take afraid! You... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, to take you in and let you, uh, have a talk with some of our police. You understand? Why don't you just tell us? And, uh, we'll leave. Get out of your hair. We're not interested in you. So the threat of being arrested uh, sharpens him up pretty quick smart. He says, oh, okay, okay, what, what, what do you want to know? What were your dealings with Nilash, sir? She was... Oh, she has a connection to the Cloudwood Brigands. She was the uh, the go-between between us and them. We, uh, we're non-violent, let me stress that, non-violent activists. Uh, they operate only in the city. But uh, they like to do things out in the in the, the rough the rough forest. It didn't really tickle our fancy, so she acted as a uh, bit of a proxy for us to get the latest news to and from them and bring it back. Insight check when he said he's, you know, part of a non-violent group. Yep, roll me an insight. God damn, you and your fucking insight rolls. Uh, yeah, he, he seems to be telling the truth. Um, he's pretty shook with the threat of uh, being arrested. Uh, okay, so I don't think this guy's probably part of a Cal's group or anything. He's just some other sort of low-key wannabe re 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 uh, revolutionary or something. He does. He does tell you that uh, up until recently, he he actually figured something must have happened to Nalasa because he hadn't heard anything about a plan that they were a plan that they had come up with together and was supposed to be carrying out soon. What was the plan? Like, is he talking about shit like you know, like spray tagging a building, or is it more? Is he a bit more involved than that? Ah, uh, you you compress him to ask, and uh, he says, "Look, the plan was to have." Me and the boys dress up as uh, Eladrin warriors, sneak aboard a ship that was carrying a huge cask, a huge, huge cargo of fire gems, and toss it all into the harbour. That'll fucking teach him. <laughs> Soggy fire gems, eh? Ain't no use to know. Teach him. Or whoever the boat was that she'd organised it for. You don't know the boat name? No, she never got back. I mean, it was supposed to be coming up soon. She was supposed to give us more details by now, but she hasn't, she hasn't oh, been back in. Was meant to be coming up. So, was she, was she the one that sort of suggested the idea to you? We, you? well, we came up with the details of it, but she, she suggested we hit these, uh, these well, the Janorans, the... The, the military of Ryza hit them. Assumed it would be one of them. And 
Let's go to no. Do you know when that was meant to be done on? 5th of summer. Do you know the day's date? Do you have the newspaper? <laughs> Fuck <laughs> knows, dude. I don't know. Soon. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> Just coming up soon and they haven't got any details. So soon TM. Soon TM. Oh, well, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. Um, what about everyone else? What are you trying to do with your act activism? What are you activ activating? Disrupt it. <laughs> Disrupt the system. Stick it to the man. To accomplish what? What do you mean, accomplish what? To disrupt the system and stick it to the man. That's the accomplishment. What about those afterwards? After what? So you disrupt the system. Then we've brought down the, the structural systemic violence and oppression that is pervasive in our society. And what about the system that comes after that? Well, I hope it's a good one. Or we'll take care of that one too. Borisov, I think you wasted your time. <laughs> He is not a man of deep thought. I resent that. I resemble that remark. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Put that <laughs> system of oppression on your on your intelligence. <laughs> oh, rough. Okay. Uh, I say I think this one has been a useful idiot for. This for the lady and whoever she works for. Uh, thank you for your time. You have been very helpful. I like how you just said that right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's a moron. Thanks for your time, buddy. <laughs> he nods. No worries. And uh, <laughs> he goes back to his buddies. Well, I think we should perhaps uh, talk to the... Uh, the... Might be a good idea to talk to the brigand we have locked up in RHC. Despite your best efforts, Rylar. Uh, what is the bartender doing at the moment? The bartender? Yeah. He's tending the bar. <laughs> is he looking suspicious? No, he's just serving drinks to people. Can I I ask he just one? doesn't like you. I, yeah. ask one, yeah. I don't think he's suspicious. I think he just he didn't like you because you were a cop. Tensions are pretty high at the moment, considering uh, the police are seen to have failed stopping a, an act that Wait, several thousand people died. Uniform? God damn it. Well, no, you're not in police uniform, but they can recognise RHC pretty easily. They recognise the man. I can just tell by the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you all came in here and started questioning okay. people. <laughs> the badge on your coat. <laughs> what was that, Dave? I was going to say, you kind of sort of can do that. I say, um, like, yeah, it's... Anyway, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's definitely easy to tell when someone's a cop. Yeah. Just because they have to tell you, right, if you ask them? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cop, right? You have to tell me if you are. People still believe that, don't they? They really do, yeah. I mean, it's great for cops because they can be like, no, I'm not. It's like, oh, okay. All right. So, you guys uh, done here pretty much? I think so. I think I'm going to stop back to the RHC, maybe see if we can talk to the uh, the fellow that I've locked up. Alright. Um, as you guys are leaving the place, you hear, or rather, you're bumped into. Uh, roll me a d4. Someone roll me a d4. I'm not doing it. <laughs> uh, Riley, you're bumped into by uh, somebody just bashing. Oh, sorry, sorry, sir. Excuse me, excuse me. And he sort of clasps your hand and, and, and bows. Excuse me, excuse me. And uh, excuses himself pretty pretty quickly and then leaves out the front door ahead of you. And you notice he's actually pressed something into your hand when he grabbed your hand. And it is a note. I'll, I'll read it. The, uh, the note says, uh, Nalas' associates 
are in the Goodson Estuarial Reformatory. What? Why is that name for Jail? Yeah, Reformatory. That was, the place, that was the place we heard about the other day. Was, wasn't that like another factory? Like we asked if it was an orphanage or something, and it turns out it just sounds like it's an orphanage. So it's a... Uh, in Pine Island, it is a uh, like prison reformatory um, where this the person who owns it uses it for uh you know like america you have all the prisoners doing all of your factory work for cheap labor and it's all pay them pennies on the dollar yeah paying them pennies on the dollar for cheap labor and uh reforms them into fine upstanding citizens part of our culture um and that's the note that's given to you that's all it says yeah we had heard about that place not long ago hadn't we yeah like was it with the when we was it when we talked to the carriage driver? Uh, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. yeah, it was one of the places uh, that dude went. Creed. Yeah, I think it was Creed. Was it? Yeah. In his oh. mustache disguise. All right. Yeah. So I'd like to probably talk to the brigand, and then I think that's probably a good next step. Um, are we are we still talking to Hannah Mil- uh, Saloin tonight? Yes. So make and sure that someone's writing these notes down as well, so someone someone somewhere is keeping track of what What's you've got to. Did you say shotgun or shotgun not? I said shotgun not. I mean, <laughs> I thought Ryla was the brown noser, so he was writing the notes, you know, in character. Uh, uh <laughs> yes. Fine, I'll read them. Yeah, oh. he's writing them in character, just not in person. Exactly. <laughs> so what am I writing down here? I can't remember. I know, just all of your guys' leads that you've still got to look at and leads you have gone to. Cool, can you put that in there? Thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> in other words, what leads do we have? <laughs> the there you go, buddy. Orphanage, that's not the orphanage. Thanks, Spy. You're a real You're welcome. Pal. You just asked me to put your leads in there. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, <laughs> it's Goodson what now? And can you put that in chat? Uh, Goodson Estuarial Reformatory. Okay. So about how long have we got before our meeting with the terrorist lady tonight? What time did you organize it for? Because it's as long as you would like. And also, it's a game, so you can be like, we'll wait, and then go and meet her now. Okay. Oh, well. So, I think, yeah, we'll stop by the RHC. That shouldn't take long. Maybe okay. check out the reformatory, then maybe go see the terrorist lady. I thought we went to the bar in the evening slash We night. did go in the evening, actually, so, yeah. Yeah. So, it might not be the going to... Actually, the yeah, reform- you'll probably be needing to go there now. Okay. Might be a bit too late for the reformatory today. Yeah. Unless you go at night. Yeah, okay, Ooh. so we'll go do her next, and then we'll, um, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, I didn't, yeah. Okay, so you go to this place where you're going to organise the meeting finally to happen. <laughs> Just a, a few nights delayed, but you eventually go to this this place. Um, where did she... Oh no, that's right, she had the canary with you, eh, that was going to lead you to it. Yeah, and then the canary went to send the delay message and never came back to us. Oh, it came back to you. Let's come back. Oh, sorry. Real quick. What was the name of that wharf you said again? Bayou. Bayou. B-A-Y-O-U. Bayou. Bayou, Bayou. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. That's right. It's Bayou. Sweet. Uh, so, yeah, you can call out for the canary and it'll come from the nearest tree. And, uh, yeah. You can You can tell it you're ready to meet. Let's go, Canary. Okay, you tell the, tell the Canary, and it begins to sing, and uh, starts flooding around in circles, and then sort of starts going away in a direction, and sort of stopping to make sure you're following, and then when you start following it for a bit, uh, it eventually just solidly leads the way. Now, it guides you uh, to the Cloudwood. Now, you know where the Cloudwood is, eh? You've all seen the City of Flint map? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
also real quick if anyone wants to add any leads i forgot because i'm pretty sure i forgot a few leads i don't know if they can edit it should be able to you guys can try if you want to they can't i don't think we can edit it i think we tried that before no. yeah it's read only son of a bitch that's right um so the, oh. this this bird leads you into the cloud cloud woods uh down some trails and up lush hills uh, before finally stopping at the top of a 300 foot high waterfall that has a clear view of the eastern horizon uh, those of you who are native to flint will recognize the cascade as the bridal veil uh, it's a romantic location immortalized in folk poetry and the site of several famous weddings uh, the river that feeds the waterfall rolls over an 80 foot wide cliff spreading the cascade into a thin sheet that at dawn can illuminate the whole valley with the sun's reflection quite a beautiful location Wild flowers wreath the cliffs and dot the few boulders that hang near the fall's edge. Hummingbirds flit about, and they seem to pay close attention to the party's presence. Uh, as you're standing here, you see Gail emerge from the tree line on the opposite shore of the waterfall, and she holds out a hand. The canary that guided you here flies to her hand, and when it touches it, it disappears. Uh, do you do anything while this is happening? You just stand and watch? You wouldn't believe the traffic on the way here. <laughs> it took us days. Oh dear. No. It's, your, it's your picture. My, uh, my apologies on our delay. <laughs> so she... My God, you're hot. She steps off a high rock and uh, glides towards you a few feet above the surface of the water. Uh, lightly stepping on three boulders, not even putting any weight onto it, just sort of tapping them with her foot as she glides over. Um, and she makes her way over the 80-foot river as easily as if hopping a narrow stream. Uh, she lands on the shore just near to you, nods to you, and thanks you for coming. She You're says... Oh, sorry, go ahead. You're welcome. She nods and she says, I'm not going to waste any time giving you any background you know my political affiliation and i respect you as i expect you to respect me that neither of us are going to convince the other that whatever we believe is the right way to think i think it goes without saying if we try to arrest you here and now it will not go well for us she smiles and says uh, it would be a futile attempt, and believe me, I'm not here to flaunt my freedom in your face. I'm here to help. Very well, then. Then speak. We will listen. Right. She says, uh, your character comes recommended by a dear friend of mine. As my bird said, passed on my message. I have a contact. A courier to the unseen court. He lets me call him Alec. He is an airy creature, dwells in shadow but is loyal to the court, and has a fondness for this nation, nation which treated his people well for so many years. Just over a month ago, when the last new moon was aligned with the planet Nem, Alec arranged for me to walk with him into the bleak gate. I will spare you the details of that journey's emotional toll, but during the few hours that night, I could see into the dark side of the world... I discovered something. There is activity in that mirror image of Flint. Not much. I never saw anyone other than my guide. Most of the buildings are hollow, like abandoned shells of dead sea creatures. But there are no echoes and no wind blows, so you can hear footsteps from a mile away. And in the distant gloom, I saw torches and lanterns. Lights that the denizens of that world would never need. Their path ran along the canal, to the analogue of Parody Lake, and then upwards into the nettles. I did not have the time to get close, but I heard churning there, and saw smoke and steam drifting into the starless sky. They are working, assembling something, hidden right where we can't see it, on the other side of our shadow. My Nalasa, she found a clue. I sent her on a mission, and she found the truth, and they killed her for it. I am furious at her murderers, but Nevada has made me realize that this conflict is larger than my selfish desire for revenge. Unfortunately... I can't return to the bleak gate, nor show you what I saw as Nivard could. 
The same alignment with Nim will not repeat for decades, and I have not yet found another way into the Bleak Gate. But I do have proof of my own. She produces a, a tiny vellum book from her belt and uh, passes it over to you. It says, this is a copy of a ritual that will detect various energies. They have to have been exposed to what you are seeking. It's worthless to most people, but I've been to the Bleak Gate. And I believe that you were with Nevad. Oh, that when you were with Nevad, so did you. Or at least you touched the veil. I've flown across the city trying to find sources. In some place, the stink of it bleeds through naturally, especially on Cauldron Hill. But I've followed trails. The night after Nilasa was murdered, I found a strong source at the consulate. And I tracked it across three districts before I lost it. And too often, I found it clinging to factory. Or in the foyers of rich businessmen. There is a conspiracy afoot. The Denorans have, are involved, an industrialist in the city, and some third force on the Bleak Gate. They've already killed to protect their secrets, and we need to find out what their goal is. She stops. That's a lot of info. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I had it typed out as well. <laughs> so I'm not. So in the last episode was your agent and. Yours alone, as far as you are aware? Yes. She was... She was unfortunate enough to be tied into... Petty crime. Before I discovered her. Helped shape her into the... The agent that she was. And she was so good. There's a great tragedy that she was killed. If you can help me... Find out who killed Nilasa and why... I'll do my best t to calm my people and stop the attacks on the industrial targets. That is what we are trying to investigate. Once all this mess is sorted out, once our mutual enemy is dispatched, I would seek an audience with Governor Stanfield for more formal negotiations than me and you atop this hill. That would be appreciated. The end is coming soon enough without everybody rushing to make it make it happen as soon as possible. You know. So um I'd like to describe to her the gate we found in that industrial building, the one where um that we fought like the robot golem thing. Yeah. Based on her knowledge, does she think would be able to use that now to go through the Black Gate? She says, uh, unfortunately, I have, I lack the knowledge to activate or even find out how the, the workings of such a gate would happen. It is, it is beyond my capabilities. If you can find some way or some one who knows, you might be able to, but I do not know. The doctor uses necklace, that necklace pretty well. Maybe he might have a bit of an insight that could help piece it together. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, was that? Sorry, I was a bit distracted by reading about the chocolate milk and brown, brown cows. Sorry. No. Just couldn't believe it. I can't either. Um, so, yeah, so... Uh, right, so she doesn't know about how to activate them, but you were discussing is that somebody who might? Oh, well, I just thought... My character thought... Because the doctor picked up how to use that necklace very knowingly, that maybe he has an idea of a little bit more about that portal. Yeah. Another thing is possibly, I'm thinking maybe we check out Pardright right University. Like, there must be scholars who study the Bleak Gate and stuff like that. I can't, like, there must be someone somewhere who would at least know sort of intellectually how you might do it. Well, but... Sorry, go ahead. It might be a forbidden knowledge, maybe. Definitely, I think that we could definitely go and try out these. I think like both 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 ideas are pretty worth giving it a go anyway. Neither should really cost us too much to do. 
Uh, also, just to, to let you know, the book she gave you contains the ritual Detect Planar Energy. And uh, she also offers you each uh, five, uh, one of five golden feathers. And Aranis can have another one. I don't care. Uh, they, she sort of cups her hand and there's like an invisible orb of wind that seems to animate these five golden feathers spinning and just dancing around above her hand and she plucks one and passes one to each of you and uh, then releases the orb of wind and she says this this is a messenger wind whisper to the feather and it will deliver your message and she keeps one for herself to just you or to each other as well any who hold a feather can message anyone they just whisper the name to the feather are these a one time use or are they really usable yes but there's like there's five of them amongst you all so you've kind of got a, a fair few uses and it looks like she can make as many more as she likes for herself oh so they are one time use yeah so it's, well the feather will go and carry the message and then it's, it's magic yet. will be spent Damn, I was about to waste it by <laughs> messaging fuck right away. <laughs> she says, uh, <laughs> if the recipient of your message is within 30 miles, the feather will seek them out. So another lead to throw on the pile. How would you even like quantify that in the f sentence? What's that? Uh, what she told us, like a uh, mirror city shadowy organization guys. Seems good. Yeah. Yep. And Bleak Gate. Bleak Gate, just effectively the shadow fell of this this universe. Probably yeah. more. Which just, way. just, just. All you really need to do is write keywords, which sort of jogging our memory. You don't really have to have a in-depth explanation. Mm. Yeah, that's why I was trying to condense all of that. So it's at this point she uh, begins to turn and, and make her way back over the the river. Do you stop her and ask her anything more? Or yes. Try to arrest her, or not trying to arrest her. No, no, no. Don't put words into my mouth. No, no. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just asking. Like, what are you, what are you guys doing? Um, why Remember. did you recommend us? How she smiled. Of us. You helped him carry out one of his final wishes. There is no greater that. smiles. You don't know who I talk of, do you? Uh, well, 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 is this in character or out of character? Both. <laughs> I say yes to both. It'd have to be Navad, wouldn't it? It is Navad. Yeah. yeah. She even uh, mentioned her by name in her speech. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I, for some reason. Um, it, I thought the unseen court contact. Oh no, that's not the person that. that told her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... That's Nevada's the one who recommended you. Mm. What a good guy. Yeah. I'll ask her if she had knows the proof that Nalasa found. Has she managed to get a copy of that proof, or was it lost? For um, sorry, what was that, Dave? Felicia's asking that. me about Dorito. Um, the proof that Nalasa found about all the conspiracy and what was afoot was um, the yeah. Was she able to get that proof to her, or was it lost when she got assassinated? She says. I knew she had found some incriminating evidence. She was to bring it to me when she was killed. I did not recover it. Right. So I wonder. Well, there was this, there was the notes that got sent to the doctor, and then there was there was also some notes that got given to a man with a goatee, wasn't there? The doctor had a goatee. I thought that was the doctor. Oh, okay. So those people were the one and the same. Yeah. Shall we 
maybe share the notes about it or just tell her about them as I whisper to you. I'm definitely willing to be up front with her. Um, definitely might be seems a good like idea. it would be for the best. Yeah. If Navad trusted her and was willing to work with her, then I trust her. So you stop her before she leaves then again? Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll uh I think we'll try and share the the notes if, well, do we have the notes on us? It's I assume we'll oh, I assume maybe. you would, yeah. I guess we'll we'll just go and show her these and say that we we suspect that some of these may have been what she found. Alright, so you, you show her or just tell her, sorry, I didn't catch it. I think we might even go. I think we sort of said we'll probably show her. Um, okay. Says so. This is what she died for. At least some of them. I think some of them may have been from other sources. Possibly. I'm not entirely sure. She takes the notes and she she begins to look through them. She says. This just corroborates my my theory. They're building something. This must point to where they're getting the parts, the materials for whatever it is they're building. You must stop them for <laughs> 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 Every time I open the mark. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, she says you must. You must. Oh my shit! <laughs> Fucking woman! Jesus Christ! You must stop them! Jesus Christ, you must stop them! Get them! Stop them! Whatever it is can't be good. That's what she says before blowing her nose repeatedly. <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm just imagining this very, you know, beautiful regal album <laughs> just talking to us and going <laughs> 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 Just like using her flowing her flowing screen. gown to blow, yeah. <laughs> Kinda kills the magic, you know? <laughs> it does. What a way to break the immersion. <laughs> uh, so yeah, she she passes back the notes. Uh she doesn't wish to keep them. But she says If you have what you need Stop them. Stop them now. And then she begins to move away. This time, right. not stopping. Yep. Not so... to blow her nose. <laughs> yeah. So do you think we should probably go forward to the next chapter, or are we going to try and find out more about the spug smugglers and stuff as well? At this point, I think we've probably got enough to pretty much... Yeah, you know, we've got a fair bit of evidence now, don't we? Do we though? Well, we've got enough to pretty conclusively sink Creed and the Mayor. Um, I'm just worried, you know, if we spend too many more days just trying to find get every little loose end, we might, you know, everybody else's plans are still going to be moving forward. Almost yeah, but... as if to. Uh outline your statement you all feel a very light rumbling shake going through the ground a couple of rocks that for hundreds of years that have sat at the top of this waterfall uh, tumble down and splash into the water below uh, one of them in fact moves and creates a new gap that opens up like a, a two meter wide gap in the, the bridal veil of water that trickles down over the, the cliff as the rock smashes to the ground below. Sounds like we've got heaps of time. Well, oh, sorry, that was my nature wrath. Nature's wrath action. <laughs> <I apologize. laughs> uh, from what I've found so far in this game, little strings lead to really big things. But I guess we don't really have much more time. So, yeah. Yeah. I see the main thing I think we're missing is the 
yeah, sounds like it's the smuggler side of things. I was wondering if Nalasa was with Cal, but it sounds like she's pretty much entirely the script person's agent. So we're still a bit foggy on how Cal fits into this, but um, yeah, we've got enough. The biggest, the biggest players by far seems to be the Mayor and Creed, and we've got enough to sink them. I'm guessing Lorcan and Cal has something to do with the smuggling ring. I mean, he's the like crime boss. Definitely sounds plausible, that's for sure. So what's the plan, guys? I think we might probably go to Delft and tell him to try and, uh, yeah, we'll hand over the evidence and try and suggest that he puts an arrest warrant out for the mayor and for Creed. Bear in mind, you found no new evidence. In the last evidence you gave him, he said, if you think this is enough, go and make the arrest. So just to save oh, you a okay. trip back to him. That's pretty much what he'll say. Because you've got no new evidence. You've just got uh, suggestions from Hannah, basically, that uh, something crazy is going on at Cauldron Hill or at the Nettles, wherever the fuck she saw the, the lights. I think it was the Nettles, eh? Shall we yep. maybe in the morning swing by the wharf slash docks to see if we can find some evidence of smuggling that could be linked to him? It's clear. probably not a bad idea. Yeah, You've I think there's no point. You've got evidence of smuggling that links to him currently. The stuff, but the like notes. Some more evidence from another source of this. Basically, the, yeah. what we're really missing is, I think, what we're missing is a link between him and the actual murder of, um, the murder of Nalasa. If we can get him for that, then I think we've really got him. And could we actually? I, I know Dan did just tell us that we can actually go back and question people. Have we, do you yeah, think you we can could go back go to like the and, consulate if you like. Yeah, do you think we could maybe try and grill them a bit lot harder by saying, look, we know you guys have been telling us shit, so um, see if we can get some of them to squeal. It's up to you guys. Let me know what you want to do. What do you think, Trapper? I reckon we move with a bit of haste um, to get these, the mayor and Creed and everyone. Oh my god, your stud is gone, Trevor. Oh. It's a miracle! I, 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 I think we should do a Creed. <laughs> it's the first thing he's been like 100% about, and it's just come out clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to chuck in a vote, and I'm going to put uh, a tick. If you want to gather more, across if you want to confront. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah. is that good? Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead first, and you know, make another disaster happen, like the fireplace. <laughs> so, tick, to... if you want more, if you want to, you know, keep looking for people. Bear in mind, you'd be starting a new day because it's now the end of the evening. And cross if you feel like you have enough to go to Creed. I mean, that the notes, the evidence she gathered, basically, probably the strongest proof we're going to get outside of everything else we've gathered. So I don't really know what more we could possibly get out of this. I think, like I said, I think an actual link to the murder itself would be would be good because, you know, smuggling versus murder is, you know, kind of a whole new ball game. But, yeah, I'm also getting worried that we're running out of time. Well, I mean, we don't have just ties to smuggling. We have ties that he, they're big traitors. Like, I mean, we have direct proof that they tried to murder Sechem and uh, have been dabbling in witch oil and doing all sorts of shit. I thought that proof, I thought that proof uh, that of the murder of Sechem was only on Creed, though, wasn't it? I thought that that didn't directly link to um, the mayor. Like, I know, True. like, Creed, like, Creed is toast. I think the mayor has. We've got links to. We've got. We've, we've got links to the mayor for um, the smuggling, but I don't think we've got links to the more dirty stuff. But we can also tie the mayor and Celine Creed together, like the uh, hundred percent in that they were in it together. So basically, yeah. I'm just thinking. He, I'm just thinking though. He's going to have the. He's going to have the best legal counsel that money can buy. So. I do Unless think he if we don't die have... when we apprehend him. <laughs> <laughs> happens too. <laughs> I 
Actually, I could make that happen. What's as a golden circle to stop teleportation, right? Gold in general. Yeah, an unbroken golden ring will stop teleportation within it. It's like the, the king would wear his golden ring. Yeah. I think we should pick up some golden hula hoops or rings or something. Like, he must have them. <laughs> golden hula hoops. He must have a plan to escape. Just start playing, like, what do you call that? Fucking throwing rings onto the... Yeah. <laughs> it's right. like horseshoes um, with the mare. <laughs> Because uh, they know that we were getting closer to them. Surely they have a plan of what to do if they think that we are coming for them. I'm assuming you guys are having this conversation on the way back to the city. And uh, the votes all look like straight to McBannon? I think so. I think we're going to get it over with. Okay. It's hard to know. I feel like either decision could potentially be the wrong one. Okay. So you guys head back to sleep. For the night, at least. Uh, I'll make sure you've had your long rest. And... Get rid of Silly and Creed and Wolfgang off the track. And... Uh, the morning comes around. And you prepare to take Cauldron Hill. Uh, Delft, I'm assuming you, you let him know you're about to do it. He gives you uh, eight men to take with you. Eight RHC... Uh, excuse me, RFC, RFC, <laughs> radio frequency trip, uh, RHC officers <laughs> to come along with, and uh, wishes you good luck. So, regretting the decision. you guys make your way to Colgen Hill, going up the road uh, towards the gate that is the front of Nick Bannon's manor, and uh, as you, you get there, the guard at the gates asks you all why you're here. Oh, um, sir, um, I imagine we were given a warrant, and I'll say... I'm going to try to cover your mouth f before you do that. Um, and I'm going to keep yeah, I'm gonna keep <laughs> trying to say it, so I'm going to go... So I guess do we roll a opposed cheek or something? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to whisper to us yet. Yeah. We don't need to give him more time to escape. I'm not planning to. I'm going to say we have a warrant for the arrest of Mayor McPerson Face. You will let us in at once. They could give him time to stall. So, the time that you guys are discussing, <laughs> he, he gets to stall. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the guards, on seeing the warrant and, and hearing that you're here for McBannon, says, of course, I, I would I would never disrupt the ROC, ever. And uh, he, he rushes to open the gate for you. And uh, you guys are allowed in. And as you're coming up to the manor, uh, you see uh, McBannon sort of stepping onto the, the front stairs. Hello, officers. Back so soon. Yes. Please, come inside. We'll talk in the garden. Um, here yeah, is quite fine, thank you. Um, no, no, I insist. No, sir, I insist. No, he, he turns and Mayor steps McBannon, inside the door. You are under arrest for treason against the city of Flint. You should, you should follow him in, because I have a battle map for the outside. <laughs> 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 He invites you in. He's being very pleasant, though. Like, he's not resisting or anything. He's just like, please, we'll, we'll talk inside. And, yeah, uh, but there's a battle map. Oh, you've been here before without fighting? God, chill out, mate. I mean, <laughs> I haven't had this map, I think. You did. Yeah, no. Are you sure about that? Yes, because it had the, uh, the workers and stuff. Someone was sneaking around. It was when uh, Kinsha met the guy who made the Nicodemus. Or he met Nicodemus, sure, the guy who made the lift. Oh, right. Sure. The cigarette. But yeah, so he, he asks you in and says, you've got a warrant, I see, for my arrest? Please, there's no reason we can't talk like gentlemen in the guard, uh, in the garden. Step with me. Step in time, step in time. Can I just cuff him and after four, he lures us into his battle place? But now, uh, well. 
you, we you, have to walk and we can. Doesn't have to be a fight. Never has to be a fight. So I think at this point, um, we're worried about, as you said, especially we're worried about him fucking teleporting away or something. So yeah, we definitely aren't going to. I'm, I mean, Dimitri isn't want to go and want to hand him the advantage. Fair enough. Well then, you can stop short of the garden if you think there's something in there. Just step inside. Um, I'm not going to force this. Like, I'm not going to force you to come inside because I'm going to make him teleport away. I'm not a dick DM. It's just, literally, I have no map for outside. <laughs> so there's there's no advantage you're giving up. Okay, so... Yeah. So, he says, uh, So, please, enlighten me. What is the... What is the charge which I am being arrested for? Treason. Treason? And smuggling and... Um, conspiracy. And what evidence do you have for this preposterous charge? We have ample evidence. Um, with the... And you, you will be, we will be able to discuss in greater detail when you come down to the station. I, I don't believe that is wholly necessary. Uh, I'm sure we can sort this out like gentlemen. Uh, you hear him call out, uh, Cillian! That son of a bitch. Okay, I am at this point mage uh, cuffing him. Default mage cuffing him. Uh, as you as you reach out, he, he sort of gets a worried tone to his voice. Cillian! And uh, as you you hear a bit of movement, uh, there's a few staff members that are you know walking around and trying to see what all the the huff huff is, is about. And you see Cillian pushing past a couple coming from this way, and uh, he's moving towards. And just as you go to cuff. Uh, Mayor Reed McBannon, uh, he, he just shouts out, he raises his fist and he says, So you found me out then? And when I was this close to finally unlocking the mountain's dark power! And then he sort of relaxes, and he, he takes a step back and he says, Come on, be serious! With the tone of, yeah, someone who's trying to humor a small child. You haven't told anyone about this yet, have you? You seem like, like good people and, and good officers, I'm, I'm sure. I wouldn't want you to get in trouble. I wouldn't want you to jeopardize your future. He he laughs again, jumping to wild conclusions like this. I I mean I appreciate your diligence. It's the respect you of the, the city. You have the right to remain silent. I I have nothing to hide. It's this here. I'll, I'll show you. I'm not not up to anything. Allow me to give you a guided tour. Anything you say can be and will be used against you. The the basement. Do you want to see the basement? That's where the that's where the villains always do nefarious deeds of ill import. Am I right? The, or right, the attic? I'm cuffing him, <laughs> and I'm gonna be very tempted to gag. The attic. Isn't that where the villain is stashing the evidence of dark goings on? Perhaps have concealed something incriminating in the pig pen out back. And then he says, he smiles uh, one last time and says, "So which is your pleasure?" Mr. Creed, you are also under arrest. Please do not resist. Creed, stop. McBannon says, Creed, eh? I guess... I guess you do know everything. And then, uh, there is... Something, something strange which happens just here. Shit. As you're, you get one cuff around his hand. He's not really resisting, but you get one cuff around his hand. And then there is a massive shake in the ground. The whole manor begins to shake violently. This is stronger than any quake you've felt to this point. There is a deafening crack as a fissure cuts its way directly through McBannon's house. The rear half of the house heaves upwards 10 feet, and you see some of his staff thrown clear, a couple fall down into this fissure, and the rest sways and crumbles and moves, threatening to collapse completely. Uh, there's a hiss of fluid under pressure, which comes from within the, the damaged structure, followed by the horrified screams of dozens of workers who are crushed between the falling stonework. And a moment later, the wretched, un 
unmistakable stench of burnt oil wafts through the garden in a thin, visible fog, and every bit of grass and flowers that's touched by the fog wilts and dies before your eyes. McBannon sort of turns as well. Everyone's caught on a, like, what the fuck by this this turn of events as this crack uh, opens up. McBannon's eyes are wide with shock, but he recovers with very fast aplomb, and he, he casually shouts, Creed! Check the reservoir! Everybody else, kill these people for me. Oh, boy. <laughs> And roll initiative. And roll initiative. We've been here before. You're not going to fight to that, right? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> oh my god, these initiative rolls are... Um, you said we're going to be carrying on a wee bit, aren't we? Uh, only if you can. If you can't, we can we can stop there at the, the start uh, of the I'd say um, we definitely can, but will I be allowed to have another 15-minute break first? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is everyone else good to carry on, or does anyone need to go? I can probably carry on until the end of this combat. Should we also see if we can ask if Kevin can stop playing Stellaris and play, play <laughs> um, this instead? We should. Alright, I'll see you in like 15 or so. Sweet, yep, we'll take a break. Uh, Jeff, I assume that was an okay for you, and fuck, you're good to go for a bit? Yep. Sweet. Alright, I'll pause here.